everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, I guess on a lot of shows I talk about, you know, what I've done this week and what an interesting week it's been and what an interesting week it's been on the planet. And, you know, every week, in essence, in every life, that's true. I mean, in every life there are trials and tribulations and joys and sorrows and all the things that make a human life full and rich and powerful and sad and extraordinary. And this week, you know, I could tell you my story and I'm probably the people, everybody watching the show, whenever you're watching it, has their story for whatever week it is in their lives. But this week I was on the East Coast. We do this tape and I'm sitting on the West Coast in California. And I was in the East Coast and I was flying back and it was incredibly rainy. I mean, torrential rains were on the East Coast. I was flying from the East Coast to the West Coast where there are these unbelievable forest fires literally tearing up hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres. And it was like, you know, I was caught somewhere in between fire and rain on this plane, you know, 35,000 feet in the air. And it was, it, in a way, it was like you expected to see locusts come or f frogs fall out of the sky. Which plague was, you know, was I going to go from the East Coast, the flood plague, to the West Coast and the fire plague? And yet in all our lives there are those things. There are, you know, we, like the James Taylor song, we've seen fire, and, you know, I've seen fire, I've seen rain. I've seen lonely days that I thought would never end. And who of us in this human life hasn't had those days and those joyous days and those extraordinary days? And yet all of us know, consciously, unconsciously, in our conscious heart, in our unconscious heart, deep in our souls when we wake up in the middle of the night, that we can know a love that in essence, transcends that, that we can know a truth, that we can have an experience of an unconditional love, of a, of a bliss, of a joy, that in a way is not dependent on the ups and downs and the joys and sorrows of this life. All of us are going to have them in human life. But we also know that there's a connection to the one, to the, to the love of us all. And that's what humans want throughout history, through teachers, through masters, through religions, through countries. There's always been that desire to connect to something bigger. And we always want to connect to the biggest, which is in essence ourselves, what we call God in a way. And tonight's show, again, is about our realization, our quest, our realization of that love, of that truth. And, you know, tonight's guest is, as you well know, has been on Bridging many times, is one of our favorite just gifts that we bring to the world. You know, Michael Tamora is a spiritual teacher, he's a healer. He's the founder of almost all the psychic institutes in the United States. I mean, literally, he's been teaching psychics to be psychic for 25 years. He's the author of an extraordinary new book, You Are the Answer which is the answer, <laughs> you know, so there you have it. And Michael travels the world day after day, week after week, bringing that love, that realization, that consciousness, that healing into human lives. And now he's, in a way, going in a slightly different direction, not in terms of his desire to bring that love, but bring it to, to children, to bring it in, a, in almost a more universal way to teach, to set up systems where that love can be more available everywhere in every city. And to, to be able to talk to Michael about that and hear his experiences of all that is just an extraordinary gift for us all. So we have that and then we have some beautiful videos that uh, sacred visionary art music videos that were produced by David of the Light Party and they're very, very beautiful. So again, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us all to, to begin in this moment to, to reach into that love, to recognize, to peel off 
the things that separate us. And, you know, Michael is one of the great examples on earth that can be part of that transformation. So, as we normally do, join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first uh, visionary art video, and Michael's going to be with us, and settle in. It's an opportunity. Please. everybody. So, yeah, let's uh, watch this first video and then Michael will be with us. It's um, a music video by David and the Light Party. Many of the artists you'll see who are produ uh, presented here have been guests on the show. Catherine Andrews, Leszek, Forchek, Ali Minor. And it's just another way that people express their experience of love and oneness through art and music. So,
Hi, well, we're on the set with Michael. Welcome, Michael. It's great Thank to you. have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah. So why don't you talk? I, I mentioned in the opening that you, you know you're you know kind of not moving in exactly another direction, but you know like a spin-off kind of. I mm -hmm. mean, you've done schools before, but mm -hmm. you know, why don't you talk about your intentions and why and all those things? Well, as far as you know, this is a time where I think um, when the change of the millennium, you know, 2000 uh, came along, and there was. Um, uh, some of the newspaper reporters and stuff says, well, how about a prediction for this next millennium? And um, the only one that I felt was really important, they were, of course, expecting, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, Elvis was, is oh, Yeah, Elvis is going to But uh, the thing was, you know, in the Bible where it says, and the children shall lead them. And I feel very strongly that this time is when, in so many ways, the children from all ages in so many different ways are going to show the rest of the world, the humanity, their parents, teachers, and whatnot, that there's a whole new way of life. And um, it's going to come in the form of, well, what I said in the prediction was it's going to come in the form of uh, some of the, more of the kind of prodigies, you know, uh, in math and music and art and everything like that, but there's going to be so many more of them. And then there's going to be those who come in, brilliant souls, very mature, advanced souls, who are going to come into bodies that would normally be considered um, uh, handicapped or, you know, challenged in some way, uh, illnesses, congenital conditions, uh, leukemia, uh, palsy, whatever. And they're going to show their parents and the medical profession in the world that, hey, we don't have a problem. You know, we're fine. And uh, uh, this is what we chose. And so the whole idea of illness, whole idea of physical disability is going to change. Uh, and there's going to be kids who are going to be involved in politics and leadership on a larger scale than the you know, lemonade stand. And already, this is 2003, three years into it, already this is already happening. And then there's going to be many, many kids who are going to uh, show Oh, tremendous psychic abilities, uh, intuitive abilities, healing abilities. Uh, they're having many babies who are born uh, with AIDS uh, because of the parents and stuff, and um, they're healing themselves. By the time they grow up a couple, three years, four years, it's gone, and, and medical science doesn't know what's happening. So already those things are starting in different parts of the world, but this is going to be even much more in the years to come. And these are what are called, uh, is it the same, this, are psychic kids the same as the indigo children? Or is that, or is that a little different? Well, how, how is that? I think, I've heard those yeah, things. I've heard those terms too, and I don't particularly like the labels to, to label anybody, but uh, I do understand why those labels are created to, mostly not about the children, but to educate the adults. And, and there's some differences that people discern in this group of kids to that group of kids. Just because we need to put things in boxes, it, but there's yeah. no reason for it. They're just it, extraordinarily ultimately, gifted. Ultimately, I, I don't think there's going to be because everyone's born psychic. Okay? Uh, we're all psychic when we're kids. It's just that uh, we get it invalidated out. And, and psychic, a lot of people don't know what the word psychic really means. It's in the dictionary, it says it's um, of the soul, right? Pertaining or of the soul. And that really is what psychic is, is the spiritual being that's incarnating in the body. As children, as babies, as children, we're still intact. We're still connected to that awareness, the psychic awareness of our true nature as a spirit. And, but by the time a child is generally four, five, six, seven years old, that gets kind of wiped out. And by the time you're in school, the attention gets focused on whether your pencil's sharp enough or whether you're writing between the lines or whether you know one plus one is two. And so that gets so wiped out and without the help of the parents, without the help of the educational system, most of us don't survive our early childhood with psychically intact. And then adults... So the gifts get covered and Covered then over. It's not that they're gone. Right. You can't yeah, destroy right. it, right. but it gets covered over. And now more and more, because there's more conscious parents and there are more conscious teachers, even in the systems, um, it's, it's being prolonged. It's, there's the children who 
have it more strongly. You know, the beings who come in, uh, we're all at different levels when we come in. But the bodies are kind of the same, right? And so, like a Mozart coming in, people think, well, there's this prodigy, musical prodigy. But in that lifetime when Mozart was known as Mozart, that was a culmination of many lifetimes for that soul in music. And he chose his parents to be musicians and a musical family and opportunities. And so he could keep on uh, evolving and, and producing on that prodigious level uh, without getting it covered over. The same goes with psychic awareness and, and spiritual awareness. A child, could, uh, the soul could come in with a great deal of awareness or not that much. And those who come in with a greater degree of awareness, uh, it's harder to cover it over. And so they're the ones who get in trouble in school. Um, early on, I had horrendous problems in school. And oh, fortunately, back then, they didn't have labels such as attention deficit and emotional, you know, whatever, learning disabilities, because if they did, they would have put me in those categories. And um, yet, the brightest ones are the ones that are often labeled uh, with a problem. Troublemakers. It, yeah, and, and right. either on the troublemakers or they have a problem, right. you know, uh, right. emotional or learning right. and disabilities. And yet they're, they're geniuses. They're, they're extremely capable on certain creative levels or they're very spiritually evolved. And they're here to be leaders in this world, but you have to survive your childhood. And uh, so I'd like to see a situation in which we can teach the souls coming in how to operate in these bodies, in the kind of society we have. And if we start early, uh, then we can continue and the, the adults would be very capable, aware adults. We've, we've had times where we start with, a lot of times I work with parents trying to conceive and they're having difficulty. And so I work with them on a spiritual level where the beings coming in are extremely capable. And so the more capable the parents, the more capable the souls coming in, they're going to be a lot more discerning. They don't want to just happen, you know, whatever way. They, they like to have certain kinds of stable family situations and so forth. And you can work on the karmic relationships for souls coming in before they're born. And if the parents can start to become aware that they are communicating with a a real spiritual being. And that being often may be more uh, capable, more aware than the parents are. Even though it's going to come in a small body exactly. and needs to help to exactly. grow into it. Yeah, and, and the parents are teachers as well as the child is a teacher on different levels. And sometimes the mistake is the parents, when they become aware, some parents are very spiritually aware, and they become aware, wow, this child, this soul I'm bringing in as my child is, is a master, is, is an enlightened being. So then, all of a sudden, they forget their parents and they give up all their seniority to this soul. Yes, the soul may be an enlightened being but or a master. still in a two-year-old body. Exactly. And it and needs apprenticeship it, on, in this plane. In this world, it, the, the being needs, especially when the soul is very capable, they're so much more aware and sensitive this energy in this world is pretty rough. And so they need a lot more, in some ways, uh, support and validation and education. There's a certain fragility that goes with, with that. With that gift. Yeah, because sensitivity, a lot of people think sensitivity means uh, weakness because this, they always see the sensitive people are the ones on the flat on the floor. And, but what sensitivity is, it's, it's, um, uh, it's like um, a stereo system. You know, the s stronger the power, the more uh, the powerful the amplifiers, the more sensitive the system. And human beings are the same. The more sensitive a person is really shows you that there's a lot more power behind that awareness. And if they don't know how to manage it correctly, it, it whaps them back. And So your what, hope would be is to set up like uh, an ever-expanding, in a way, mm -hmm. framework for mm -hmm. both parents and gifted Chil all children, children, all children, all children, all children yeah, because to be taught in a way where that gift is amplified and supported, supported yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, so and protected. Exactly. Yeah, that's all those areas, you know, protection is important because uh, it's not the kind of protecting of coddling and, you know, overprotective parents and things like that. It's the protection of the validation of spirit 
the more aware the people around children are spiritually, the more the children can maintain the spiritual connection they already have and not give it away, not lose it. And um, as a child, you know, I saw things very differently than most people. But when you're a kid, you don't know that other people don't see the same thing. So after a while, I'm telling the same thing, and everybody's just looking at me like, you know, what's, what's wrong with this kid? Well, you know the story about another friend, about Gina Gidio, another gifted yeah. kid who was put in an insane asylum Exa and given and shock treatments. Shock th treatments for a year. Two years. Two yeah, years. he had yeah. it for two years straight. Every and, week. Yeah, I mean, and then he didn't remember his gifts for like 40 years. Yeah, who'd want to? Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. If that's the result. Every time I heal somebody, I get zapped, so you know. This, this is not working, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Right. You don't have to be And that's why the protection yeah. is so, yeah, so, so, so essential. Mm -hmm. And because why did and that And it's happen? education, really, is the root of that. Absolutely. Ignorance is the cause of all the problems. It's, right. it's you know, nobody, if you ask people, uh, you know, in wars, you go to both sides, and who's the bad guy? It's always the other side. Nobody says, I'm the bad guy. Everybody says, I'm the good guy. And we're the good guy. We're trying to do good things. And those guys are the bad guys because they're shooting bombs at us. And both sides and always say the same Plus, we have God on our side. Oh, God's always on our side. <laughs> it's <a> beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's picking sides now. It's yeah. always yours. You yeah. Know? And so nobody thinks of themselves as the bad guy. They always are threatened by the bad guy. Whoever threatens them is the bad guy. And so when a spiritually aware person comes along, it's a tremendous threat. You know, what happens when, when people are, they don't have to be malicious, they're hiding because they're embarrassed. You know, they, they have things they're ashamed of inside. And if they think that somebody sees their, you know, thoughts Imperfections and, yeah, and, and they're psychic and they're, they're aware, they're going to get scared and they're going to either run away or try to push that other person And they away. also threaten the status quo that, you know. Yeah, you know, right. investment of your life, your time, your money to get something to a certain place and somebody comes along and says, oh, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very yeah. popular. That exactly. For example, like if somebody is really a dedicated doctor and, and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to school, become a you know, respected medical doctor and really believes in his work and some kid comes along and says, oh, you put those medicine away, I can touch you and, and heal you. That's going to be kind of threatening. I would say. If it's one person doing that, that's fine. But if you have a school and you start to teach people that everyone has this capacity, then it's what's going to happen? You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your whole uh, research. You know? And your whole reason for living, people Up to think. That point. People but, think, I mean, that's you know, the illusion of This it. is the intensity of what you were talking about in the introduction tonight of we're all going through this very intense time. Nobody's not going through an intense time. And whatever you have, it's, it's amplified. And part of it is this, you know, if, if you were a world-class athlete and one day you uh, s slip and fall on your bathroom and, and break your leg and it's completely gone, they have to amputate it, it's going to change your life. And, and a lot of athletes go through something like that and they can't handle it. But then there's a lot of them who go, OK, well, I can't run anymore, so I better find something else to do. And this is a time period, especially now, is uh, the consciousness and the, the pressures of all the influences in this world are boiling this up from within all of us and so a good question to ask is one of, okay, this is what I've been investing my time, energy, money, and everything into. What if that just goes poof? Okay, what if my job is completely you know, taken away for one reason or another? Or uh, what I think I am. I'm a healer, and this is what I am. Well, what if I can't heal anymore? I'm an artist, and I can't paint anymore. Then what's going to happen? I'm an athlete, and I can't run anymore. So it's not only the world-class athletes or the world-class pianists that have to go, what if I can't do this anymore? It's everybody. What if I can't be a mother anymore? What if I can't be a child anymore? Okay. So we're being pushed to the limit right now in terms of how much are you identifying with this one or two roles as a well, human we're being. we're so much faster than that. So much bigger, right. so limitless. 
And sometimes the more capable the person is, the more they, they um, get themselves stuck in this, this is what I'm really good at. Okay? And when you can't do that anymore, I'm dead. You know, it's, it's, I, I don't want to live anymore. And the pain sometimes of identifying with one thing so much that if I'm not going to be able to be that anymore, or if I can't even live up to it, it could be an expectation. You might not even be there. But if I can't become a world-class athlete or a world-famous uh, something or other, what's the sense of living? And so people start to give up their lives because they can't even meet this expectation. Right now, this is a time where we're letting go of all of that. And, and to, so that you can remember that you're a human being, that you're this limitless spiritual being that if you can't do one thing, you got a million other things you can do. And, and the worth and is... And it's not almost important what you're doing. It's, absolutely. I because mean, that's, yeah, that's And especially this culture, our American culture, is so focused, has been so focused on, on um, uh, your worth is, is in your accomplishment. If you haven't made your million yet, if you haven't become the CEO of the corporation, if you haven't set a world record or become a celebrity, you're worthless. And that's not true. One's worth is totally intrinsic to one's beingness. And it matters not what you do, how much you do it, how well you do it, that worth never changes. And this is a time of reminding people, this is a time of remembrance that, oh, you better reprioritize where you're looking for your worth. If you're looking out there and what you did or what you didn't do, whether it was great or not, as your worth, you're going to have a problem. Who are you with, whether you're married, whether you're not married, yeah. what mm -hmm. race, religion, color, all the things yeah, that seem important to us, there's something yeah. deeper, bigger, way bigger. Yeah. Way bigger. Yeah. And it's your existence, that you exist. And look at people, you know, you walk through Hollywood, and uh, my wife, Raphael, was telling me this. Uh, you walk through Hollywood, and, and everybody looks at you. If you look like a star, you look like somebody who they saw on TV, and they go, oh, is that so-and-so? Oh, it's not. That's nobody. Right? If, if you're not famous, you're nobody. And, and um, because people think that the worth is in being somebody. This is a time where everybody has to die. There, and this is not a physical death. Some people would rather check out. They'd rather kill their body off and get out of here thinking they're going to get away from this. But what we're being faced with is what is our relationship with our own beingness? What's our relationship with who I am as a spiritual being? And if I don't find that worth within myself, it's going to be pretty scary. And this, you were talking about the basic nature of humanity is to seek out love or seek out God or seek out a higher power or a greater beingness. And I totally agree. That's the, when you strip everything down, that's what we find in the worst criminal. It's the thing we find in a retarded person. It's the thing we find in the greatest somebody or other. Okay? And so, so this is a time where we're stripping everything away and saying, okay, we need to find this. What, what, is it that, what, what is it that we really seek? Let's, let's throw away all the other stuff and get right to it because we're running out of time. Unless the consciousness of humanity changes tremendously in a very short time, it's not going to, obviously, you know, the ozone layers are repeated, last, all that stuff it's is... It's amazing that we're cutting off the branch we're sitting on. We don't, <laughs> yeah. seem, we don't seem to really be noticing. And then the yeah. people who do get, you know, called quacks or yeah. you know, imprecise science or whatever. I mean, because it's, it's fairly obvious. Yeah. Yeah, it's they don't want to look at what's really going on. And I think the, the watchword for this time we're living in is complacency. People have to really become aware if they're getting complacent. On one side, so much fear is being pushed on everybody of when the next terrorist something is going to happen or, or the stock market's going to crash or whatever. And, and so people are going into tremendous you know, uh, franticness of, from the fear. And then on the other side, those who have enough money and those who have a good job and a good marriage and the da 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 becoming complacent. Oh, we have, that's not about us. We don't have anything to worry about. Or they're about. getting protective of it, and they, mm -hmm. they can feel it slipping away, and then you get more, more raspy fear. and yeah. more fear. So, so this is a time of, of really watching out where you 
resist, you know, where you, where you try to hold on to the little and miss the big, miss the whole, the oneness of everything. And every time we turn around, we're being reminded of there's nothing but God. There's nothing but that which is divine. So the minute somebody goes, oh, this is great, but that's no good. This person's worth a lot, but that person's worthless. What are they doing? They're denying that divinity, the whole Well, we don't feel the connection between the whole and know everything's part of the yeah, connection. So exactly. So maybe what we'll do now is show the second half of the uh, music video, the sacred visionary art. I'm sure you'll love the first part. And then we'll come back with Michael. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll talk some more. Maybe we'll do a healing. Maybe we'll do both. So this was produced by David and the Light Party. It's very beautiful. So.
Hi, we're back with Michael. So, you suggest that maybe we can, you know, give some tools to do, you know, a healing of, of people's areas, and mm -hmm. so why don't you do that, and sure. you know, just uh, we'll we'll do that. Well, um, I wanted to give some tools tonight uh, for each person to be able to work very quickly, very simply in healing their environment, whether the environment is a room like this, uh, your office, uh, your home, or a bigger, larger environment of the whole neighborhood, the block you're living in, or even a larger neighborhood of the town, city. A lot of times people come to me, especially when there's blazing fires going on in the Southern California area right now, and, and what can we do? What can I do? We were talking about complacency earlier, that that's the place where if you feel powerless of being able to impact some environment that's kind of beyond just you, then this uh, very simple healing technique or tool would be very good for you. So what I'd like you to do is just kind of sit comfortably, put both feet flat on the ground, and um, uh, sit in a chair probably would be the best way to do this. Close your eyes and relax. And just kind of take a deep breath and decide that you can be right behind your eyes, that your awareness is going to settle in right behind your eyes in the center of your head. Also, as you are sitting there relaxing, I'd like you to imagine a big telephone pole or a tree trunk from the area right above the tip of your tailbone area all the way down to the center of the earth. Right above the tip of your tailbone is an energy center about the size of a half a dollar piece. And just imagine this center of light, this disk of energy, and from here that tree trunk goes all the way down to the center of the earth and hooks in there. This is your grounding cord. And just imagine that all the tensions, all the stresses, any areas of resistance, anything you're holding on that's not really your energy, things you pick up from other people, from the environment. And if you could imagine that there's these little psychic hands holding all of this in you, wherever you're, you uh, are holding them, and then just imagine opening those little hands and it starts to fall down. Everything's falling down into the earth, uh, grounding off out of your space. Then, now that you're grounded and being in the center of your head behind your eyes, this is the place where you as a soul can be most aware. Now, if you could imagine that the room or the space that you are wanting to heal becoming gold, just decide that you're going to raise the vibration and this requires no effort. It's not like holding your breath or tensing up or anything of your body. It has nothing to do with your body. The body could be feeling good, it could be feeling bad, it doesn't matter. But just decide that the whole room starts to vibrate. Everything is energy. Energy in the room, the air is energy, the walls are energy. Your consciousness is energy. So just decide that the energy in this room, in the space you're in, is turning all golden. The whole place is filling up with gold energy. Then, what I'd like you to do is imagine a nice big rose, like a flower, the rose. And imagine that rose in the center of the room. Just put it out there. It's just floating in the center of the room. And this rose has a magnetic quality and decide. All it takes is your intention. All it takes is your imagination. And just decide that this rose is magnetized to attract all the negative energies, all the invalidation of spirit. Anything that um, is energetically charged with uh, kind of an antagonism, uh, negativity toward spirit, toward your beingness, toward you being there as a spiritually aware being. And just let this rose magnetize and it's kind of like a, a vacuum cleaner. It just sucks up all the energy in this room that has uh, this negatively charged uh, level. And just watch this rose s attracting all this negative energy. You can see it as darker energy or whatever way you want to see it. And it's just going right into this rose. It's absorbing all the energy that's really 
not belonging to the kind of space that you would like to set for this room, for your office or your, your home or wherever you are. And then imagine exploding that rose. Again, no effort on your part, but just the decision, of, okay, I can let this rose blow up into neutral energy. It's just going to explode, pulverize, and become this totally neutral energy and settle in into the room. It adds the new energy. It's kind of a fresh energy uh, that was all uh, cluttered up before. Now, to do it again on a slightly different level, I'd like you to imagine another rose. And this time, I'd like you to let this rose kind of almost like a remote control. It goes th over the, the floor. And, and it just sweeps up all the negative, invalidating energy. Anything that says you can't be here fully as a complete, full spiritual being in a physical body, as a human being, that any energy that says, no, you shouldn't be here, you can't be here, we don't want you to be here, anything like that, just let this, ener let this rose vacuum up the whole floor of any energy that's vibrating at that level. And notice what happens. The energy of the room you've already set to be on a golden level and see how much brighter it becomes as you start to collect up all this other energy, the invalidating energy. And then once you do that, explode that rose, create another rose. Imagine another rose and then take this rose a little higher in the room and just circulate it all around the room, around the walls, uh, around the ceiling. Just take it all around the room, kind of like housekeeping. <laughs> and and uh, vacuuming up all the energy particles, if you will, throughout the room, throughout the space that you're currently in, and smooth it all out. Just collect up all that negative energy, collect up any energy that doesn't allow for the validation of spirit, that doesn't allow for the divine to be here, that doesn't allow for the oneness of existence to be all the divisions, all the antagonisms, blame, those kinds of energies, judgments against one another. Just decide that you're going to collect up all that type of impression on the energy space of the space you're in and collect it all up and boom, explode that rose again. And as you explode that rose, imagine all the negativity just dispersing, becoming neutralized. So what you're doing is you're taking up negative energy and cleaning up the environment all the pollution out there in the physical world what we call pollution is really starts from human pollution in their minds in the consciousness when the consciousness is polluted with all kinds of negativity all kinds of divisive uh, thoughts and judgments and blames and criticism against one another then it starts to pollute the energy and from that pollution of the energy and consciousness we start to produce chemical pollution and and other types of physical level pollution. So this is the beginning of cleaning up our environment. We have to start with cleaning up our spiritual environment, the environment of our consciousness and our subtle energies. Then we can start to hope to clean up the environment of the whole planet. So you can use this process anywhere, anytime, whether it's a very small physical space or a very large physical space. But you'll notice as you start to do this, and if you do it with many people in agreement, it will go so much faster, and you'll notice the whole energy of the room starts to change. And right now, there's uh, the studio audience in this studio are trying to do this and, and working on this l little simple process, and the energy in the studio has changed enormously. Uh, probably those who are in the studio can feel it. Okay, so then one more sweep with this rose throughout your uh, space that you're uh, in, and then explode it. You could also do this with your aura, your own energy field around your body. So if you create this rose and just sweep it all around your body in your own energy space, not the room, but just within your own aura, you'll be able to pick up all the energies, the resistances you pick up from other people, people's thoughts flying around in the room, so forth and you can just pop that rose, explode it, and everything gets de-energized very quickly. Now to finish this up, what I'd like you to do is to recharge yourself. As you do this, you also release a lot of energy out of your consciousness, out of your mind, out of your body. And so what I'd like you to do is imagine a beautiful golden sun above your head, 
and start to bring this gold sun into your head, into, from the top of your head, throughout your whole body. Just bring it all the way through your whole body and flush through your entire body with this golden light. And this energy is your life force energy. You're bringing in new life force to replenish all the areas where you took out the stale energy, the negative energies out of your space. And once you fill up from the top of your head to the tips of your fingertips, tips of your toes, all the way through front and back, just let expand this energy around your body. Let it fill that whole space of your aura, the electromagnetic energy around your body. And once you're all filled up, if you'll stretch, open your mind, uh, eyes, and just lightly stretch. And it would be best to kind of bend over and just drain off all the excess energy out of your head, <coughs> your shoulders, and your arms. And then gently come back up, look around, and be right here. Thank you. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you, yeah. Michael. Did that's you notice great. the energy yeah, I did. change in yeah. this room? It yeah. almost felt like air conditioning got put yeah. on something. It, it, did you it, notice it that? It got a lot cooler in yeah. here and a lot lighter. Well, I had stopped talking to so <laughs> a certain level of hot air had been eliminated from the thing. Uh, so in this, in this thing of, of nurturing children and mm -hmm. protecting children, because I think, you know, I had similar experience. I mean, school was always... <laughs> what am I doing here? It's the weirdest place. And, you know, the constraints of it and, and the education of it didn't really connect to, mm -hmm. you know, the power of what we were in a way. You exactly. could feel it squishing you and squishing mm -hmm. you and into this little desk, you know. <laughs> yeah, little box. You know, and, yeah, and you just felt it. Yeah. Can you, know? you imagine? Can you imagine being, say, in high school or junior high, high school, and your teacher saying, okay, we're going to study about this civilization called Lemuria or Atlantis that predates huge civilizations before ancient Egypt or Greece or China or any place else. And, and then, furthermore, have a teacher show you, okay, we're going to teach you how to look into the Akashic records where all the records are kept of civilization, of human consciousness, every individual, whole countries, civilizations, everything. And to teach them how to read it for themselves so they don't have to rely on some teacher saying this is the way it is or this is the way it was. They can look at it for themselves and go, oh, okay, the teacher said this, but this is what I see. And then we have a discussion and let's compare notes because some people are going to be more capable at seeing these levels and go, oh, I see this. And then this person says, well, this is what I see what really happened here. It's going so, to be great. So, I mean, what is your intention with that? I mean, would you hope to start one school near where you live and yes, then kind of... and branch out. I'm hoping for, I'll probably need a lot of help. And so people who are... Uh, interested, they've been, you know, in the teaching levels. They're credential teachers, or they're very interested in, in uh, working with children, or they've worked with children. In so, in other ways. words, like, I mean, not that you would try to reinvent the wheel. We've talked about mm -hmm. that. How much time and energy mm -hmm. to do that? But almost set up systems that, although they're in an essence a new paradigm, they can like be yes. enveloped or enveloped over. I'll get it right. <laughs> It's one of these enveloping things. You've been pushing too many right, envelopes. envelopes. Yeah. I really have. But uh, <laughs> some which way that it could plug into, say, a Montessori or a, a Waldorf or something Any, where you don't yeah. have to start, or Every, even public schools if the consciousness could reach that. So because they're all available and kids are going there exactly. every day. Exactly. So we're, we're looking at it both ways where uh, some people are uh, itching to start their own alternative school. Uh, that would be great. Some are already working in established systems, and, and if they could incorporate even some of uh, this. Uh, I was talking about history, but even more important would be uh, how to handle your own spiritual and psychic abilities and awareness. The kids are getting so sensitive, they can't handle it. It's just a bombardment of all this input. Uh, and it's not just school, it's, it's everything. And so, so it's amazing places where I've gone into schools and other cl uh, some teachers were very open to this and I've showed the kids how to how to do this grounding how to clean out their environment um, how to find their body most of the kids are not in their bodies until they come in and they go oh I feel so much better most kids especially in, uh, well even younger ones but also in teenage levels they're going 
they don't realize that half or th three quarters, 90% sometimes, of what they're feeling is everybody else. Because they're so sensitive, they're, they're so empathic. Sensitive. And they're picking up everybody else's energy and they're trying to solve it, but they can't solve it because it's not them. And they're picking up everybody's thoughts in the in normal school classes with 30, 40 kids. And they just haven't been taught how to be discerning, how to sh open it, shut it. Exactly. It's just like open vehicles. Wide open, wide and, open. and it's, it's like an international airport going on inside of them. And in a little body who ha doesn't have much experience yeah. and is fragile. And yes. And, and you can imagine trouble would set in. Absolutely. And so then, especially, say, in high school, uh, when the hormones are starting to go, well, what are some of those hormones? This, your psychic energy is kicking up. Your creative levels are kicking up and your independence levels are kicking up and, and they do go through biological you know, hormonal changes and if, if they knew how to manage their energy, if they start to learn how to run this energy and, and work it correctly, they have one-fourth the problem, one-tenth one the problem uh, because it's really not a problem, it's a growth process. Uh, also, uh, this is a time where we get into romantic relationships. Our sexuality starts to turn on more. And uh, how do you ha that's all energy, but they're not being taught anything about that on an energetic level. Uh, how do you handle the energy of, of uh, say, if you're a girl and, and some boy is really attracted to you and, and it just engulfs you with all his energy? How do you handle that? If you're a boy and, and um, uh, some girl comes along and, and puts an energy cord right into your heart center and you feel like you're going to have a heart attack and pass out, how do you handle that? Okay. These are all things that are very simple that could be taught to anyone, but it's not. And so we're going to find that once these kids start to learn these levels, and of course I'm talking about teenagers right now, but how about if they start it in early elementary school? or even preschool. We've taught kids from three months old. And uh, they're fast. They don't take the length of time that adults take to learn this because they don't have to do much unlearning. With teaching an adult, the older person that I teach, the longer sometimes it takes because years of programming, years of all of this unconsciousness is set in and it hardens and we have to kind of break that up before they learn the new stuff. But kids, it's, it's like, uh, today I was visiting a couple of brilliant kids and the mama was trying to get them to be interested in what I was saying. I says, no, I'm not talking for them. They, they already know yeah, this what stuff. Yeah, what do they mean? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just talking to all the adults in here. Yeah. Right. Because and, that goes into their minds. And, you and, know, and they're all so spiritually aware. The little boy comes along, six-year-old I think, he comes along, he, he touches base with me and he goes and does what? six-year-olds like to do, go watch Spongebob or whatever. And, and, but every so often he'd come out and one word, couple of things, one look, and it's all said and done. He and I were in great communication. He, he can go out and play. Right? Adults need to sit there and, you know. Yeah, reason. Do, do a, a lot, lot of stuff, reason. yeah. yeah. So, so when you're communicating, and, and most people have the experience of somebody they're really in tune with, you start finishing each other's sentences, right? And it's, that's the beginning of spiritual communication. It's a lot more than the words. It's, yeah, the it's all there. Yeah, yeah. it's so, all there. So, you know, amazingly, we're coming to the end of the show again. <laughs> and, you know, just, you know, a lot. A lot is available. A lot is available to all of us every day. I mean, you know, as Michael's title is, you are the answer. And the answer is within you. Now, you know, how we get in there and how we can be clear about what's there and really experience it. I mean, that's the mystery and the, and the, the love of this life. So again, if you want any information about Michael, the schools, I mean, as he said, you know, there's just, obviously there's just so much that can be done and so many gifts and so many ways and that people can do it. So Alan, 805-687-2053, and I'll give you all your information. Good night, we love you. God bless you, thanks for coming. Thank you.